hello guys welcome to the biology lesson number three in today's biology we'll be looking at um, life processes of living organisms all right so remember where we are coming from we are coming from where we were looking at um, uh, what biology is the branches of biology then we looked at the uh, characteristics of living things then now we are looking at the life processes of living organisms so we are looking at the processes that occur in living organisms that causes living organisms to have the life no wonder we are calling these processes life processes of living organisms all right so without further ado uh, let's just go straight into the lesson all right so you must understand that the living organisms require a set of life sustaining chemical processes within their cells okay so it means that uh, these living organisms which include us human beings and animals require a set of life sustaining chemical reactions within their cells okay so there are some chemical processes that occur within the cells and these chemical processes that uh, occur within the cells sustain the life for living organisms or they cause living organisms to have the life which they have okay so now we are saying that um, the processes that take place within the cells of living organisms allow organisms to so these processes which occur within cells of living organisms allow organisms to do what grow and reproduce okay so because of those life processes occurring in cells living organisms can do what they can grow and reproduce then number two maintaining their structures so they can be in the structure they they have they can maintain the structure they have because of those processes that are occurring in cells then number three uh, re respond to changes in their environment so you and me are able to hear are able to see we are able to respond when we are beaten by something because of the life processes that are taking place in cells then uh, number five and the repair damaged cells so these are life processes occurring in cells enable us to undergo repair damaged cells okay like when you injure yourself your wound is able to recover because of um, these life processes uh, processes occurring in cells okay so we are saying the processes that occur within the living organisms in order to sustain the life together are called the metabolic processes or metabolism okay what am i saying i'm saying that um, these processes that occur within the living organisms in order to sustain life together are called the metabolic processes or metabolism so those processes which occur in living organisms to sustain the life of living organisms are called the metabolic processes or metabolism so you must understand that uh, metabolic um, metabolism consists of two independent phases so this metabolism consists of two independent phases number one is called catabo catabolic or catabolism and we have also another one called the anabolic or anabolism so these are the ones that we are going to mention here we are saying here we have catabolism so what is catabolism we are saying it is the breakdown of complex organic organic molecules into simpler ones releasing energy in the process here yeah. so like the breaking down of complex organic molecules into simpler ones releasing energy in the process so like when you eat, you eat like uh, shima for instance shima consists of what we call food nutrients we call carbohydrates so carbohydrates they consist they, they contain what we call starch a, a starch is a complex molecule which when you eat it it needs to be digested into smaller substances or broken down into smaller substances now the breaking down of those complex or large organic molecules into simpler ones releasing energy in the process is what we call catabolism okay it's very important that you understand 
that right so let's move now a bit here so now here you must understand that um, during catabolic reactions energy is released yeah so during that catabolic reaction where uh, uh, complex organic molecules mm -hmm. are broken down then energy is also released during that reaction okay so during catabolic reactions energy is released okay so for example during respiration glucose is broken down to release energy required to sustain life processes yeah so you know respiration which we already looked at earlier on which is the breakdown of glucose to produce energy and what and also water and carbon dioxide so that process which is respiration is an example of catabolic reaction because it it involves breaking down glucose to release energy and this energy is required to sustain life processes you and i are able to exist because of the energy that we have in our cells okay so for example during respiration glucose is broken down to release energy required to sustain life processes okay so this is the equation which shows the respiration so this is the equation so this one here is it's a glucose then glucose plus oxygen releases carbon dioxide plus water plus C energy so this is a balanced equation for respiration and you need to know this so i said this is glucose this is oxygen and this is carbon dioxide and this is the water and energy so in other words we are saying in respiration during respiration glucose is combined with oxygen to release carbon dioxide and water and the energy all right so now we have talked about the catabolic as one of the metabolism reactions which occur in living cells now we said there are two we said the catabolic reactions and anabolic reactions now let's look at the now anabolic or anabolism so what is anabolism we are saying anabolism refers to chemical reactions in which simpler substances are combined to form more complex molecules yeah so it is opposite of what of catabolism so anabolism is the chemical reactions in which simpler substances are combined to form more complex molecules okay so we're saying for example a simple sugar such as glucose molecule combines with another to form a more complex double sugar known as the maltose this process is called the condensation okay so now let me now just explain here so we are saying in this uh, anabolism we are saying anabolism refers to chemical reactions okay these are chemical reactions in which simpler substances combine to form more complex molecules okay so you get simple simple molecules you combine them and then you form complex molecules so it is the opposite of catabolism now we are saying for example simple sugar such as a glucose a simple sugar such as a glucose molecule combines with another form okay combines with another form uh, combines with another to form a more complex double sugar known as the maltose okay so this is called the condensation so what we mean here is this like in this process energy is used so in this process energy is used here energy is released now what we mean here is this you have a glucose molecule with another glucose molecule then you form a more complex one so this is a simple glucose and this one is also a simple glucose then you form this one maltose is a complex molecule and then there's the release of water so such a process we call it condensation so it is anabolism and in this case this type of anabolism is called condensation because it involves combining two molecules after you combine two molecules there is release of a water molecule here so this process uses energy all right so let's move and look at uh, some examples of uh, anabolism and catabolism so here we are saying that here are some examples of catabolic and anabolic reactions so catabolic can also be called catabolism 
okay and the anabolic can also be called anabolism so don't be confused by that so let's look at now some more examples of catabolic and anabolic reactions so we'll start with the catabolic reactions so example number one of catabolic reactions is cellular respiration so you have to know examples of catabolic reactions number one is cellular reaction now what is this they're saying uh, the break it's the breakdown of glucose to produce ATP the energy currency of the cell so so cellular respiration is just the breakdown of glucose to produce ATP which is stands for adenosine triphosphate AD, uh, ATP A stands for adrenosine then T triphosphate tri, then this one phosphate which we are going to know uh, later on when we will be looking at the respiration in details so the breakdown of glucose to produce ATP the energy currents of the cell now meaning that the ATP is the form in which energy exists in a cell or it is the form in which energy is exchanged between cells because when they say the energy currents of cells you know currency meaning something is flowing if you call it currents so energy in cells flows in form of ATP okay it doesn't exist as just energy that is very important that you understand like that so cellular respiration is an example of catabolic reactions and it is the breakdown of glucose to produce ATP which is the energy currency of the cell so this is the most well-known catabolic reaction and it it and it and it occurs in all living organisms so this is actually a complex diagram which i had to pull out from the internet to show you but it doesn't matter whether you understand it or not at this level because it just says anabolic respiration uses oxygen to turn food into usable chemical energy so there are some oxygen coming here and these chemical energy which are coming here actually they are doing some there are some uh, NADH coming here so there are some uh, oxidative reactions going on some electron transport and the, what is the chemo store chemo osmosis going on and there are some water being released and ATP being released so some more energy already in the cells are also being released there yeah so this is an example of a catabolic reaction so another example of catabolic reaction is actually uh, digestion okay so since the uh, catabolic reaction is talking about uh, breaking down large molecules into simpler one digestion is one of it all right so here you must understand that the, in digestion it's actually the breakdown of food into smaller molecules that can be absorbed by the body okay like when you eat food you chew it it goes also in the stomach it is digested into simpler molecules and then it is absorbed in the body so digestion qualifies to be an example of um, catabolic reaction because it is the breakdown of food food into simpler molecules that can be absorbed by the body so this occurs in animal cells like this body here when you eat food here you chew it in the mouth then you roll it with your tongue you swallow it okay when you swallow it it goes here in the stomach where digestion happens also in the intestine here then it is assimilated into the uh, bloodstream where uh, the food is transported to body cells for use okay so another example of uh, actually is the fermentation so fermentation is another uh, is another example of catabolic reactions because the fermentation is the breakdown of organic molecules in the absence of oxygen so this occurs in some bacteria and the yeast okay so fermentation is the the breakdown of what of organic molecules in the absence of oxygen this occurs in some bacteria and the yeast okay so now we are done with the catabolic reactions we have looked at the number one we have um, looked at the respiration the number two we have looked at the digestion number three we have looked at fermentation now we look at um, anabolic reactions examples of anabolic reactions number one is actually 
protein synthesis okay so what is this we are saying the assembly of amino acids into proteins is what we call protein synthesis so this is the process by which cells build new proteins which are essential for all life okay so the process by which protein are built or are made is what we call protein synthesis and it is an, an example of um, anabolic reactions okay so number two is the dna replication or dna division so we are saying the copying of dna molecules okay is dna replication okay so dna replication what is it the copying of dna molecules now this is the process by which cells reproduce and it can and it can or oh, all right and it is essential for the transmission of genetic information from one generation to the next so during this one actually when there's copying there's actually building process going on and no wonder it qualifies to be uh anabolic reactions because in anabolic you build smaller i mean large complex molecules from smaller molecules like also dna copying so the number three example of uh, anabolic reactions is glucose synthesis so glucose synthesis so here we are saying the synthesis of glucose from smaller molecules this occurs in plants alga and some bacteria yeah so the other one is actually this one here which is actually photosynthesis so photosynthesis is another example of um, anabolic reactions why because uh, it is the conversion of light energy into chemical energy stored in glucose meaning that um, in photosynthesis there's actually creation of glucose from smaller molecules like number one you need to have water number two you need to have carbon dioxide in the presence of light energy these when they combine then there is a formation of glucose there's formation of actually carbon dioxide and actually some more water okay i mean oxygen not carbon dioxide okay so by in simple terms a photosynthesis photosynthesis is the process by which plants manufacture their own food which is glucose from um from uh, from carbon dioxide and um and water in the presence of light energy okay so now it is an example of what kata anabolic reactions because it involves the building up that's why we are saying it is the conversion of light energy into chemical energy stored in glucose this is the opposite of cellular respiration okay so cellular respiration is the breaking down but this one is the building up so it occurs in plants alga and some bacteria so like in this diagram here we have some light energy going on in some um uh, these the, these are actually chlorophyll here chlorophyll molecules here so this light energy in a chlorophyll molecule so you find that carbon dioxide uh, oxygen is released water here actually is taken over and uh, combined actually to form sugar okay so this carbon dioxide enters here so it undergoes a lot of processes where sugar is made but oxygen is released okay so another example of um, anabolic reactions is actually fat synthesis so what is fat synthesis we are saying the synthesis of fats from fatty acids and glycerol so it is the manufacture of fats from fatty acids and glycerol this occurs in all animal animals yeah so we are done with this now we look at um, we look at the role of enzymes in metabolisms okay so we are looking at the role of enzymes in metabolism enzymes are biological catalysts which speeds up uh, speeds up uh, the rate of um, uh, reactions in organisms okay now what is the role of enzymes in metabolism so we are saying enzymes are biological catalysts that speed up or slow down the rate of chemical reactions in the body without themselves being used yeah so they speed up the reactions in our body like digestion or slow down some reactions in our bodies 
but themselves they don't get used up so now so that's what they do so enzymes are protein in nature that's what you must understand like they are proteins then number two they produce they are produced by specialized cells within the the body then each chemical reactions is catalyzed by a specific enzyme that's what we know about enzymes and we must know that therefore enzymes control the rate of chemical reactions without which reactions within the cells would go on very slow or not take place at all yeah so enzymes are very important their role is that they control the rate of chemical reactions okay in the body because without them um, without which or without them reactions within the cells would go very slow or would not even take place at all that's what you should do understand so we are saying the table below shows the differences between catabolic and uh, anabolic reactions so we have this table here so catabolic reactions here anabolic reactions here so here we are saying in for, in terms of catabolic reactions most complex molecules are broken down into simpler molecules in catabolic reactions and energy is released example of catabolic reactions is respiration then we come to anabolic reactions simpler molecules combine to form more complex molecules very important to understand then here energy is used then here examples of anabolic reaction is photosynthesis okay so now let's look at um, some work to do so what we have covered so far i have work for you to do here review exercise 1.0 state the characteristics of living things give four reasons why a moving car is not classified as a living organism then define the following branches of biology these ones we define them then state the role of enzymes in metabolisms then in number five in each of the following chemical reactions state whether the reactions is anabolic or catabolic here and here and here so this way you needed to submit for marking this okay so thank you for watching for those interested in online lessons the number is 0977-9241-75 and to just support this uh, recorder i'm using this recorder which i'm using here let me just show it to you it's very very important maybe if you want to use it you can use it so this recorder it's actually called the band cam so you can use it for recording the link is in the description there all right thank you for watching guys as for now bye and see you in the next lesson